All right, so uh, let's meet our guest today before we go straight into our topics of discussion. And just next to me is uh, Honorable Andrew Ejapa Mesa. He's the MP for Second D Constituency. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Always a pleasure to be. I'm well. Yeah, you're well? Great. Everything well. all right? By his grace. I'm Imani fine. giving you some pressure here and there. Are you uh, happy? Not, not at all. Not at all? Not at all. Mm. Uh, like I always say, well, good morning. Good morning to my very good friend uh, and to our church viewers. Yeah. I always say that these studies are only indicative okay you know they they are intended to guide all uh, right informed decision making i see and so yes i don't discount any of these findings mm. but then uh, uh we we had a good score if you ask me uh, really absolutely we'll come to that we'll come sure. to that but also good morning to uh, honorable mohammed Az abdul aziz he's the mp for Mion constituency from the northern region good morning and welcome to good morning the Bella. New Day as well. i hope you're well i'm blessed yeah I'm all blessed. right so let's take a quick look at that story where policy think tank uh, imani ghana scored the npp government uh, a little below 50 percent in terms of fulfilling their manifesto promises and so it says that the policy think tank evaluated the 510 promises as captured in the party's manifesto. Selom Amenya reports. The manifesto is a progress report which seeks to evaluate the rate of execution of the promises made by the NPP in the run-up to the 2016 polls and how many of those promises have been accomplished three years on. According to the report, the new patriotic party NPP made 510 promises in its 2016 manifesto dubbed Change, an agenda for jobs, creating prosperity and equal opportunity for all. The project assessed thematic areas of governance, economy, social sector, infrastructure and human capital investment to carry out an outputs-based assessment. They fulfilled. Some of the promises we don't even agree with. If you take school feeding, when it was being, no parent in this country asked for their kids to be fed. And today, school feeding has become a huge bureaucracy. And when you go into it, you see the trouble with that thing. All right? But they said they would do it. We don't agree with it, actually. But they've done it, so we take it. All right? So we don't put that qualitative issue there. And on the economy, it revealed that out of 162 promises, only 41 have been implemented, culminating into a score of 54.35%. Under governance, which has corruption, governance and public accountability as part, the Akufuado-led government scored 23.60%. On governance, Imani noted that the government is yet to undertake legal reforms on assets declaration. It however noted that government had delivered its promises on security and foreign affairs but failed as far as the election of metropolitan, municipal and district assemblies. Government again scored 43.47% in the energy sector, 47.98% on economy, trade and industry after 87 captured promises. It further scored 50% on economic policy objectives, 69% on macroeconomic stability and 61% on economic management and taxation. By scoring 48.78%, government is deemed to have performed satisfactorily. This also translates to the fact that looking at all the promises in the manifesto we examine, they have been able to implement 48.78%. Some not full implementation, but some around 25% of this, they've done full implementation. So we find them in very good and um, fair satisfactory progress. But there were calls for a further analysis into the impact the fulfillment of these promises has had on Ghanaians. The other measure we could adopt is to do surveys, which is the best impact assessment anyway of any of any significant government policy. The NDC member of parliament for Ningo Pram Pram, Sam George, argued that the project being quantitative will not reflect the living conditions of Ghanaians. The MPP government is so high for the aviation sector, for example. One is going to ask um, what have they done in the aviation sector to warrant such a high score. So quantitatively may look good, but qualitatively many themselves admit that they have not looked at the qualitative aspect of it. The policy think tank intends to present a final scorecard in 2020 ahead of the general elections. 
Yes, yeah, so that is a report by uh, Mr. Amenya. And Imani says that MPP has scored 48.78% for delivery on 2016 manifesto promises. Now, let's just quickly go a bit academical and take a look at, um, you know, the scores and what it really indicates when you score maybe between 0 and 49% or 50 to 54%. And this is according to the University of Ghana. And so it says that if you score between 0 to 49%, that is a fail unsatisfactory if you score 50 to 54 that's marginal and we keep going up uh before we move to um a which is outstanding or very good or good or whatever and so according to the university of ghana if you're scoring between zero to 49 percent that is a fail does that indicate a failure on the part of the mpp government or well they says there's room for improvement and so let's start off with mr andrew ejapa is it a fail well, I guess this was not an ac academic exercise. Well, I'm just comparing. Well, the so, comparison, I don't mm. think, is uh, appropriate. Okay. Because Imani themselves, mm -hmm. uh, who set the parameters for the conduct of the uh, study, mm -hmm. uh, rated us uh, as having performed quite significantly well. Okay. Uh, because you need to put all these within uh, a proper perspective. Governments need funding to enable them, uh, as it were, achieve the campaign promises that they made. All right. Two significant issues that clearly impacted the ability of the MPP government mm -hmm. to perform. Obviously, will be the energy sector issues and the banking crisis that huge sums of money have had to go in there yeah. to, 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 to clear up. Mm -hmm. And so if, after all this, we scored 48.8%, as opposed to our friends who claim to have managed the economy better, uh, who they didn't have any banking crisis to deal with, who even though they contracted most of the power purchase agreements that is costing this nation huge sums of money uh, at the time, uh, they scored 47%. Obviously, yes, a 1.7, 1.8% uh, differential does not amount to much, but it tells you that if this government had not been confronted with all these issues, uh, macroeconomy and all that, uh, obviously, we You'd would have done, have done way, way better than what it is that we did. But indeed, we have one more year. And so I'm hopeful uh, with the budget that was delivered last month, which we are still going through the process of uh, uh, approving. Uh, I'm very, very positive that the New Patriotic Party would achieve significantly higher than 50% by election 2020. Indeed, it's interesting and I, I say so because you hear our friends in the NDC over and over and over again say that we lied. We lied to the people of Ghana to come to power. Did you lie? No, so well, you hold on. Okay. So let's situate these two statistics. That their campaign promises that they made to the people of Ghana in 2012, they achieved 47%. They did not lie. Did they? Well, now I want to know whether they lied. Mm -hmm. Did they lie? Did they make grandiose promises? Did they? Did they make unachievable promises? Indeed. Per the count, they made more promises in 2012 than the MPP did in 2016. How many more promises? I think it was all in the region of about 500, but yes, I don't remember the exact figure. You made 510. Yes, they made 570 or so. Check the figures, and if you get the next round when I come, yeah. I'll give you the exact figure. Mm -hmm. So, did they lie? So, I've, I've always encouraged my friends on this side that look, the kind of language that we, we use in our political discourse is what is informing the 42% in the Afro barometer losing interest in our political uh, uh, activity. Because we sit here and make all sorts of argument, uh, uh, accusations, unfounded. And that's why these, a lot of um, people... No, yes, of course. I, that's my view, that people are becoming despondent. They are not interested in the political discourse. Because of arguments from the part no, of the No, I mean NBC? the kind of language that we use. So you're blaming but both parties? Absolutely, not? yes. Okay. okay. But if you use words like, you lied your way to power, when you achieved 47% of your promises in 2017, or 2012, and we have done 488 is it the matter of relativities of who lied? Mm. 
Well, in 2016, but they actually said they achieved 80% of their 2012 manifesto promises. Who said who? I'm, I'm guessing the name. I think it was the director of research of the party, Dr. William Ahaji. Oh, we're using Imani as the basis Well, I'm just for... saying that you No, no, saying... no, no, no. I'm mm -hmm. saying Imani. Okay. The, Imani score The data is that we are using okay. for purposes of our discussion today mm -hmm. is limited to Imani's assessment one year to election 2016. Mm -hmm. They conducted it in 2015, yeah. and they've done another study one year to election 2020. But there was another so the, research by the NDC. Yeah. By the NDC. Yes. Please. Please. Okay. I've heard the Minister of Communication of the MPP articulate quite strongly that we've done more than 70% of our campaign promises. I'm not prepared to rely on her, but to rely on an independent body. Because the parties can say what it is that they want to say. But this is an independent assessment by a body that, well, I respect. I don't know about the NDC because uh, more often than not, they bastardize the work of uh, independent CSOs, except when the Afro barometer that they are today asking us to make it mm. next to the Bible uh, suggests to them that this government's performance is declining relative uh, 2017 and 2019. Mm. But back to the point. Okay. Okay. We all know that manifesto is a vision that's your vision for how this government or this country ought to be moved forward you need resources to fund it several factors yes one will say that why when you were making the promises didn't you know that you needed resources you need resources by all means everybody knows but certain situations may arise that may not necessarily allow you to generate the requisite resources to fund all of them in your case, what were the problems? But I've indicated to you mm -hmm. that the energy sector PPPs that were signed, mm -hmm. okay, the take or pay contracts that were signed that is costing this country in excess of a billion dollars per year for power we don't need, has impacted the revenues of this So state. you're laying blame on the NDC? I'm not laying blame on anybody. I'm saying mm -hmm. that... But they were in power when some of well, these Well, if deals. they want to take the blame, they can. But I'm saying that these issues obviously would have impacted the ability to perform much more than the 48 that we did per the Imani study. And it's a matter of fact. Because, bear in mind, only last week, 15 billion cities is being sought from Parliament to pay depositors who have lost their funds as a result of the financial uh, cleanup. But the cleanup even what? cost more. Yeah, no problem. Than so, was so, so, estimated so, to so can you imagine what those resources could have been applied to? But this was a necessary situation that had to be dealt with. No, but if you know, our financial system was not to crash. Okay. Because that's where it was heading for. But the NDC are also saying that you spent a bit more in cleaning up the system than you were supposed to have spent. And that clearly indicates that... What, what, what is the basis of that assertion? We sat in this country, they gave liquidity support in billions to banks that essentially turned around and played Russian roulette with their funds. So the suggestion that government should have injected money in those banks... Again, what does it really mean? Okay. Wasn't it done in the past? And the Bank of Ghana still went to sleep for the resources to be squandered. Mm. So, look, let's deal with the facts as independent bodies have assessed. And not what the NDC would want to say, because obviously, as far as they are concerned, nothing good can come from this government. Unemployment rate has gone up to 6.71% as we speak now. As of 2017, it was 5.41%. Uh, okay, you, par as part of your manifesto, said that you were going to ensure that you create jobs. You came into power and more jobs were lost as a result of the cleanup and a few other things as well. Are you still going to blame this on the ineptitude Is of it? another government? Bella, banking cleanup, what would have been the alternative? You tell me the economy would have crashed. Our entire financial system would have collapsed. Could we not have Many more depositors would have lost their monies. Many more banks would have collapsed. Mm -hmm. Now, what benefit does any government derive in spending money this way? If it is not for the good of fixing what is broken, why would the Akufuado government spent billions of cities if the banking system was strong, robust, and could withstand whatever shocks that came, and not invest those monies in roads and hospitals, but rather 
use those monies to clean up the banks. Why would anybody do that? But why did people lose their jobs then? But Could of course, have safeguarded their jobs how, 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 were the go, how were the jobs going to be saved? Put more liquidity support in the banks. The NDC said Push they more money had a plan into, into, and they had into started a, working a towards cleaning bank, up the banking sector. Say that again? Yeah, the NDC said that they already had put in place a measure to clean up the banking sector before you came and would not have been as drastic as the NPP. You see, talk they say is cheap. They were in power for how many months? 48, four years. Okay? You recall that in 2015, then candidate Baumia sounded alarm bells that the situation within the banking sector is dire. And that if steps were not taken, eight banks were going to collapse. What did they do? Mm -hmm. Mabel, I want to know. Well, they said they had already they started said, putting you lived in this country. measures. Where, what, so what was the... They did, so they were waiting for 2017 to implement the they measures. They were working on it. W working? That's what they said. So, 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 and so it was a gradual so, process. So, 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 I'll let the NDC so, so manage it, but I'm just saying no, so that this is something they said. That say. they were putting in place measures, or they had put in place measures. And they were waiting to 2017 before they put in place the measures, or implement the measures that they had put in place. Cock and bull. All right. The facts are clear. You've read the Borders report. You've read the PwC report. These were people who, because I don't have evidence. Mm -hmm. I would have used words like conniving. Because those are the kinds of conclusions that some of us draw when we read those two reports. Okay? okay. They just did not care. Okay. Let, let me bring Honorable Aziz, uh, Abdul Aziz in to speak on this matter as well. Because now, well, they are saying they are not blaming the NDC necessarily. But if there was not a cleanup, then maybe monies would have been channeled into other projects that would have ensured that the economy would be uh, in a better standing. What do you have to say about that? Bella, good morning to you. Good, good morning. morning to um, Bobo and our, our viewers. The issue table for discussion has to do with the, um, the, the attempt by Imani to track the achievements of the MPP in respect of their manifesto. Mm -hmm. And mind you, this was a manifesto uh, put forward by the MPP themselves. A manifesto that won them power, a manifesto that was signed by the then candidate Akufuado, now President Akufuado, and they are then acting the chairman, now chairman of the MPP. And so Imani is only holding them to their own words, what they pledge to do. And so I expect that we speak to what they pledge to do and what they have done. Okay. We are all living witnesses to what the MPP have been able to achieve so far. We all read their manifesto and know what they promised. In fact, they were virtually engaged in some sloganeering prior to the 2016 general elections. But even before I go to, to their manifesto, uh, we are in December. Yeah. They have almost uh, ended their third year. Uh, they have a four-year uh, mandate. And so you can say that they have done some 75% of their tenure. Mm. And according to Imani, they have scored uh, somewhere around 48% to 49% yeah, of what they play to do. Yeah. And so even if you were to do a simple matching, they have not been able to achieve what they should have achieved by the end of their third year. Uh, I don't know the approach used by Imani Ghana in doing the analysis. Let me give you a very classical, classical example. Imani says that in respect of the management of the economy, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the MPP government has scored about 54.35%. The same Imani report indicates that there were 162 promises made under the economy, and they've been able to achieve 41. Mm -hmm. Those 41, we are yet to know. The 162, we are yet to know. But if you were to look at 41 out of 162, it doesn't give you 54.35. <laughs> it gives you a paltry 25%. And so I don't know the weight that Imani would have placed on each of the variables. But I'm doing a simple calculation that 41 achievements out of 162 does not give you anything close to 50.35%. It gives you 25%. Now, when you talk about, I've also read some aspects of their, of their findings, and they say the MPP have delivered on their promise on security. Bella, we all live in this country. You don't need to necessarily depend on some report to know whether MPP 
have secured lives and properties than the, than the NDC did. At least, the President Akufado himself is on record to have indicated that the levels of kidnapping that we are recording today in Ghana is unprecedented. We've had killings. We've had killings in this country that can largely be uh, described as contract killings that have not been answered. Um, security in this country has collapsed under President Akufado, and we are all living witnesses to it. You don't need an Imani report to tell you that they have delivered on security. Go and look at the police report. Police report, CID, go and look at their own report, and you know that security in this country is, 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 is declining. When you talk about take or pay, Bobo, uh, you should know that take or pay did not even start under President Mama or President Mills. We them, that was initiated by President Kufo. It's on take or pay. That's a papa oh. so when you were speaking, I well, disagree well, with well, you, let but him I was quiet. So when you make a oh, presentation, oh, I'll correct him. Oh, 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 okay. Because okay. your viewers will leave. Oh, but let him, oh. let him land so Bidam. that you can also speak Bidam. to that. Bidam. Bidam. Mm? Bidam. Initiated by President Kufo, the regime that President Akuf Akufado served was a take or pay agreement. You have told us a couple of times that you have reviewed some of the of the of the of the of the of the agreements. When your minister appeared before the Parliamentary Select Committee on Mines and Energy, and they asked him, and there's data to that, not even a single of them have you reviewed. Granted that those agreements that we signed on take or pay were bad. You have been in power for, for, for three years. You have pledged to review them. Have you done that? You haven't. And look, when you live in an economy, when you have a party that won power, they virtually criminalize borrowing and make every Ghanaian to believe that President Mahama and the NDC had reduced governance to borrowing. In fact, out of the borrowing that we did, and mind you, Bella, when we assumed power in 2009, the national debt stock of, of our country was around 10 billion Ghana cities. Before we left power, it had moved to 120 billion. What it means is that the government of President Mills and President Mahama, throughout the eight years, borrowed about 110 billion Ghana cities. Okay. Out of that 110 billion Ghana cities, we are able to point to the expansion of our airports, including Terminal 3, that President Akufado uses. We can point to expansion of ports. We can point to about 100, 1,600 schools that were operating under trees that we have been able to construct classroom blocks for. With all the money that was borrowed. Exactly. We can point to the e-blocks that we had initiated. And by the time we left, we left power, about 50 of them had been, had been completed. We can point to a lot of massive infrastructure, at least in the area of health alone, health infrastructure. We can say boldly that we invested over $2 billion dollars we can point to the, the, the gas project that we did. And so, if we borrow days within eight years, and we have this legacy mm, mm -hmm. that we can vote off, you have borrowed over 80 billion since we assumed power, just in three years. Today, as we speak, our national debt stock is around 208 billion. You have borrowed 88 billion Ghana cities. What can you be able to point to for that? Now, you, you, you don't think that they have invested in the oh, right channel? They, they, I have told you okay. what we have done. Mm. Some of them you are living witnesses to, including the, 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 the circle interchange just here. You are living witnesses to it. Which is still full of challenges seen, anyway. We have seen... We have seen <laughs> you we may have, have constructed it, but you know there are challenges when it comes to that particular stretch. Flooding is one of them. Should we continue? That can be an, an, another conversation. Okay. But I have told you, the massive infrastructure that we did in the area of roads, Post expansion, school buildings, some of them that you inherited and you've abandoned. And now when you say we should give you four more years to complete your projects, what projects? Just tell me one thing that President Akufado has initiated. Let me tell you, when you live in a country, a government that says that, oh, President Akufado, then Kenya was incorruptible. They will come to fight corruption, protect the public purse. Go and look at the reports of the Ghana Integrity Initiative, and you'll know that the worst performance of President Mills, President Mahama, is the best performance under Akufuado. In fact, how so? Go and look at the Ghana Integrity Initiative report, and you will know. Yes, look, so give us, since you are here, you have. Well, maybe I'll you. get back my phone and, and, and give you okay. the figures. Look, the, 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 um, those within the, the diplomats in this country, not just in Ghana, everywhere, mm -hmm. as much as possible, try to stay away from local politics. 
we are in a country where the Dutch ambassador looked at you in the face and said that instead of declaring Ghana beyond aid, we should be declaring Ghana beyond corruption. A clear indication that even the diplomatic corps in this country is worried about the increasing levels of corruption under your regime. And that is a, a party or a government that you want me to believe is doing well? Right. Why? Okay. Your own senior minister, Osafu Mafu, says that corruption is choking your government. The senior minister, not just an ordinary minister. I'm sure he ranks next to the vice president but your, your, your party hierarchy. Okay? The man says corruption is choking your government. You are talking of an economy that you inherited a CD to dollar relationship at 3.92. When we are leaving power, Dr. Mahmoud Obama had predicted that dollar will get to five Ghana cities at the end of 2015. We left power with dollar selling for 3.92. Today, as we speak, it is almost six cities. That is an economy that is doing well. A, a liter of petrol, hmm? a liter of petrol was virtually uh, around uh, 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 some 3.8 Ghana cities. Today, it is 5.5. All these things are as a result of the fact that the oh, NDC left oh, the economy. You see, you see Bella, when you are in opposition, when and you are in so opposition and you are reckless. The first three years fixing, Bella, to fix. When you are in opposition and you are reckless like they were, you can blame everything on the government. When you are in power and you still have that political goodwill, you can blame the, the previous regime. But almost ending your third year, and when they ask you questions, you want to blame uh, President Mama in the NDC, who left power okay. somewhere uh, 27, 2017, you must wake up to your responsibilities. Were you aware right. of the banking well, crisis and what were you doing about look, it? Before he's talking about, about banking crisis. Yeah, because that's one major you see, reason why... You see, um, you know, and let me even tell you, the, eight, the $88 billion, uh, sorry, Ghana City's debt that I've talked about, even excludes the banking sector at cleanup costs, which, in, in my view, is even wrong. Why? I'm not going to pay for it. Now, we are talking about banking crisis. They bring you a patient. You have two options as, as a doctor. Okay. To stabilize the, the patient and treat the patient and discharge the patient. Mm -hmm. If you are a reckless doctor who thinks that, let me just knock off this patient, they go and bury him. And you come and say, look, uh, uh, I bring you a patient as a medical doctor. You go and do your surgery and come and tell him, oh, the surgery was successful, except that mm -hmm. you lost your, 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 your patient. To me, as a relative, it doesn't make sense to me. What if trying to look, fix the patient's look, won't help? And so look, maybe you're supposed to look, completely knock look, out the patient. There was a credible roadmap for the cleaning of the banking sector. We recognize that there were uh, challenges. Mm -hmm. And so they were being segregated because all of them are not in the same class as banks, as financial institutions. And so you segregate them for each class, you prescribe their own treatment so to you them. did have a roadmap we had a roadmap Why is and had, that, started, and that, had you started and that, working on cleaning up let the them show us we a had. copy one copy we of had. the roadmap we had okay. have you seen it we, oh well, he bo -bo. says they have, have you so seen it bo -bo. Want him, bo -bo. Least, bo -bo. let him bo -bo. let him show bo -bo. us the roadmap bo -bo. okay you come to show the bella was that just a roadmap you had as to what to do if you retain power some of them had been given support and they were being a monitor. What, okay. What kind now, of support? Can you mention some of these supports that you had provided? Oh, he himself even indicated that some banks were given some financial uh, 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 support by Bank of Ghana and they were, being, they, 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 were being, they were being monitored. You see, when you come into power, let's take the example of the Heritage Bank. Am I right? Um, the, the one that uh, the Mensa Otibo is the board, board chair. No, that's not Heritage. What, that's Capital. Capital, exactly. Yeah. We were in this country just about some few months ago hmm, that the founder of the bank told us publicly that even in 2016, Ken Oforiata from Data Bank. But those are mere allegations. Came. Those are mere allegations. Came, came to him, approached him to buy the bank. Those are mere allegations. If the bank was, was collapsing. We didn't back it with facts, so we can't really tell no, if that's Bella, really true or Bella. not. We have as seen we here. have seen letters. We, are pretty we have seen letters. If I ask you oh, out oh, and oh. it turns out you are zero <laughs> positive or uh, AS and I'm AS, what does that mean? So can you, the relationship be consummated? So you are saying that they so did you know, without they admitting that they approach them. What does it mean? But let me tell what you. What does it mean? Okay. On the banking sector, hmm? 
land on most this of them. Well, the banks, hmm? can also speak on the reason that we are signed for collapsing almost all their banks was the fact that they had high non performing loans. Mm -hmm. Most of these banks had lended money to contractors who did work for government instead of going to borrow almost 30 billion hmm, in your west to, to, to clean the banking sector. You should have used those monies, pay the contractors, let them go and service their debts at the bank. And you have saved the process funds, you have saved the banks, that's people's investments, and you have saved the workers. You had the opportunity to, to save three depositors funds mm -hmm. with the workers and people's investments. And then we what happens to the money that was being sent into you know some of the owners bank accounts as has been um, mentioned? That has to do with issues of corporate governance. So you prosecute them. You prosecute them. That's what you do. So that's what your government would have Bella, done. A contractor Is that how you'd have dealt with the banking exactly. crisis? A, a contractor comes to borrow money from Bank A. Does some work for a government. That work is certified. What? Instead of paying that contractor so that he goes to service his loan at the bank. Right? Mm -hmm. You now choose to go and borrow money to come and collapse that bank. Why did your government sit down that and allow reckless. this issue to fester to that a point is, like this? That is reckless. No, but your party was in power for a number of years. They watched. That, that, that they I sat agree and with watched on. That I agree with as you. As all this was that happening. That the Bank of Ghana has some questions to, to answer. Because the Bank of Ghana is, is, is the institution that regulates this bank. And so I think that people at Bank of Ghana have some questions to under, uh, answer in that respect. But not your, ah, but not your government? Oh... Bank of Ghana is an institution on the their own. Ministry he, he's an honest man, so he won't he will, he will say it. <laughs> Bella. No, did the we finance talking... ministry not know all this was happening? No, they knew. That's why we said there was a credible roadmap. But you waited till it got a bit too bad. That becomes another level of conversation why we arrived there. But how to clean the sector But we want is to what know we're talking why about. you still sat and allowed it to fester. Well, I, 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 I don't and I didn't work at the Bank of Ghana. And so I may not you be able... You didn't have to but, work there but, to but, understand but, but, but Bella, the situation, did you? The, the reason is very simple. That these contractors mm, were supposed to go and pay off their loans at the banks. And so if through our um, um, uh, uh, governance processes, they did work that we didn't pay for, and you assume power, you inherit both assets and liabilities. Instead of going to borrow money to collapse the banks, you should have gone to borrow the money to save them. Pay the contractors. Bella, let me just end on this End note. on this so that I can... When we are talking in. about manifesto pledges, Bobo, you are a member of parliament. You promise to give each constituency an amount of one million US dollars every year. 2017, you did not give even a penny to any constituency. 2018, you didn't give a penny to any constituency. In fact, I remember when I asked the minister for special initiatives mm -hmm. about that one million one dollar. He said the money had a spike. Not until how Kumsin appeared before Parliament to answer that question, I didn't know that money expires. You are talking about 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 a factory in each district. Yeah. In each district, mm -hmm. as we speak today, we have two hundred and sixty assemblies. But for the benefit of the doubt, mm, uh, let's let's grant you that as at the time you made that pledge, you had we had two hundred and sixty assemblies. How many factories have you been able to fulfill? All right. How many factories have you built? How let many dams have, have you done? Let him come in and answer some How many some jobs have you created? For us. You don't pledge to come and create jobs and come and collapse jobs and say you are, you are doing well. Doing okay. well for where? All right. And I want you to come in because these were some of the questions I was going to ask concerning the manifest, uh, manifesto, manifesto and the fact that there was going to be planting for food on jobs, Zongo <coughs> Development Fund, which people are saying, um, you know, has not been allocated and all of that. So please answer some well, of these let questions me, Let me deal with us. some... some yeah. Uh, few misinformation that my friend has put out. All right. Look, I hear the NDC say that we power authority was take or pay. That's false. <laughs> How is that? Let them show us a document. Oh. Look, we power I authority you, you came here with the document. was set up. <laughs> no, I'm not saying show it to me now. <laughs> but at least you've made that assertion in the public domain for a while. Is it so true? put it out there and is let the true? public see the document. So tell us. Yeah, Blue Power tell Authority us, if it's not, was a GOG funded or loan, con loan contracted from China to fund that project. It was initiated through the Bui Power Authority, which is 100% government of Ghana owned. Okay? The repayment of the facility that was contracted in 2007 was some cocoa proceeds that was used as collateral. So it cannot be. 
and I challenge them to provide the document which says that the government of Ghana contracted with itself to take or pay power that it will produce by itself. Show us the document. We're in government. Look, you see, I hear the NDC say that this government has contracted so much money and hasn't done anything, and they will point to Circle okay. Dubai. They will point to Terminal 3. The hospitals. And the hospitals. They will, the oh, no problem. I can, I can list them. Okay. Okay. All these were done by Mr. Mahama. So between 2009 that they were in government and 2012 that they were also in government. What, what did they do? Bella, let them show us one. One. One achievement. Let them show us. Okay. Because you see, in their disingenuous ways, many of the projects, mm. the facilities, mm. were contracted during that period, during their first term, and were completed during their second term. But it suits their purpose. <laughs> so they will paint a picture and disgrace the legacy of President Mills, as if to say, when he was president, he didn't do anything. So it hurts me. You're saying that all those achievements <laughs> but you see, should be credited Bella, to the late president? I'm saying that let them tell Ghanaians whether Mr. Prof. Mills didn't do anything in this country when and he was yeah, president. When we are referring to our debts, you don't refer Hold to on, one I will deal with it. I will deal, I will deal 100, with every single issue that you raise. Look, you see, eh? Eh? he is a member of parliament. Mm. He says the government has contracted loans with nothing to show for. Every single facility that any government contracts is approved by parliament. Will he be candid with the people of Ghana and tell them that the facilities that is approved was not directed at specific projects? Hasn't he sat in parliament and approved a facility for the expansion of the Kumasi phase two and three airport expansion? Hasn't he approved a facility for the Tamale airport phase two? Hasn't he? Hasn't he approved facilities for Confanochi Teaching Hospital? Tete mm Kwashi? -hmm. Hasn't he? Hasn't he sat in parliament and approved the facility for water systems in this country? Hasn't he? Keep listing them. Hasn't he sat in parliament? Only yesterday, we approved the 3 billion euro bond that government indicated was going to use for to finance school. partial school. Was, budget, mm -hmm. partial Liability management uh -huh. and partial energy sector cleanup. Oh, and PCI school. Okay. Indicate that one too. Of course. Was free SHS yes, passed? Yes. Yes. The, Ask the, the one billion mm -hmm. yeah. outlined mm -hmm. specific line items that are provided for in the budget. It's for budget support. What, free what SHS, SHS is in the it? budget. Okay. So <laughs> if monies are being contracted to fund free SHS, I'm happy. That government is reducing resources. No, hold on. No, no, but it's not. Because no, every no, time you no, ask please. the you see, MPP, hold on, hold on. It's not. It's free SHS. I've outlined, outlined <laughs> projects. Mm -hmm. So the talk that this government is contracting loans and consuming cannot be true based on the evidence that I've just given you here now. But the belief was that Ghana was going but, to go without borrowing. No, but Ghana you see, beyond aid. yes, Ghana beyond aid is not an event. It's the president's vision that we, as a country, to leverage our natural resources such that we can fund our development going forward by ourselves. But we're borrowing heavily. But of course, we need to live today as we work to build tomorrow. But the whole idea okay, was to so, strengthen so, no, I'm coming. the cultural sector and all that. But just so that we can, to all that are being done as we speak. Our industrialization plan is on course. Yesterday, the trade minister outlined the 10 point plan to industrialize this country. It's not going to happen overnight. So we're but there's a consistent. We of course, fair. we need funding. That's why Parliament approves a certain cap beyond which you cannot borrow to fund your budget. Because as we sit here as a country, our revenues are not sufficient to meet our expenditure. Mm -hmm. What did they do? Consistently, they breached the budget deficit approval that was given to them by Parliament. That was what the criticism was about. That you cannot go about borrowing recklessly. You ought to work within your limits. So and that's you, exactly what so is going to do. So you have been doing that. Absolutely. Within your without limits. a doubt. Indeed. But we have passed the much? fiscal... No, it's under five. 4.9. We have imposed on ourselves a fiscal responsibility act that caps the budget deficit to 5% every year. And that any time that the finance minister breaches it, he is subject to censure. 
That's a responsible government. Mm. Okay? Look. One other thing that is important to this appeal. <laughs> debt stock. Mm -hmm. Yes, the MPP government has borrowed. But it hasn't borrowed 89 million. How much has it borrowed? I don't have the exact figure for you now. But, you see, our uh, debts are categorized as local and foreign. All right. Local debts are CD denominated. Foreign debts are usually dollar denominated. So at every point in time, okay, based on the existing exchange rate, mm -hmm. your debt stock will be X amount. So if today the exchange rate is 5 Ghana CD and <laughs> your debt stock is 100, your foreign denominated debt is 100 million, it will translate to 5 million Ghana Don't make that argument. No, hold on, hold on. Hold Just on. don't make it's that important. argument. How would it translate it to that? Because see, that's I the exchange rate. Because the Bank of Ghana, oh. when they're computing the total debt stock of Ghana, de denominated in cities. So they compute the quantum of dollar denominated debt at the current exchange rate. That's your debt. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so if the exchange rate changes next month negatively, then your debt stock, okay, relatively, mm -hmm. you may not necessarily have added the dollar in terms of direct borrowing. But your stock. I the dollar was held. Hold on, hold on. Right. But the true measure mm -hmm. of determining which government is borrowing more mm -hmm. is the rate of debt accumulation. Exactly. We'll get, we'll get there. Look at the figures. Uh -huh. All right. You will see that consistently this government is doing between 15 and 17 percent. In fact, less. What were you doing? 36, 40 percent accumulation of debt in a year. Okay. So. so when you are doing the analysis, be truthful. All right. Okay? All right. Look, by all Quickly accounts, I, can ask. Okay. I cannot sit here and pretend as if there are no issues. There are Otherwise, issues. there won't be government. Yeah. But we are facing the issues head on. We are dealing with them as the days go by. Progressively, we are moving and transforming this country into a Ghana beyond aid, as His Excellency the President has articulated. What's happening, and to, we'll the, get there. What's happening to the Zongo Development Fund? Zongo, of course, it's being funded. This year, the uh, provision of 100 million Ghana cities has been made available. Oh, okay. The one, 1 million per constituency that he made reference to. If you recall, earlier this year, the information minister, in fact, media, sometime in June or July, mm -hmm. was candid, as always, with the people of Ghana that, look, between 2017 and 2018, mm -hmm. because we hadn't put in place the legislative framework for the implementation of that program, not all that amount was disbursed. Yeah. But 2017, projects were done. Water systems were built. Mm -hmm. Institutional hey. toilets were built. My constituency, hey. I'm a living with them. had that. Hey. Absolutely. Did your constituency... Uh, Bella. They are there. Go to St. John. Go to St. John. I'm not... I'm, I will give you specific locations. I'm telling you. Okay, but did your constituency okay. benefit... Not a single question in this country. But and I'll, and I'll let you know. I'm saying I'll that. let you know. Uh, Bella, I Go have ahead. references for every statement that I make. Mm. The information uh, minister held a press conference and candidly told Ghanaians that we did not disperse all the 1 million in 2017. We did not disperse all the 1 million in 2019 mm -hmm. and 2018. But because now the development authorities are in place and are functioning, all the 1 million has been released to the development authorities. Where did the ambulances funding come from? But the ambulances are still parked. Yes, but of course, the procurement commenced last year. was part of the 2018... But they've been parked. No, but of course, the indication last week, we mm -hmm. talked about this. Yeah, no, but the point that, is that... Two days ago, when I was driving out of parliament, more yes. were coming in. Uh-huh. I okay? saw some and on the motorway. I agree. The call... Are they also coming to be left oh, out? No, there? I agree that it ought to be deployed. Uh-huh. And quickly. And so last week, I called on the minister responsible that, look, whatever it is that has to be done expeditiously to ensure that these ambulances are released for public use ought to be done. All right. And I'm sure that everything that ought to be done but, will be done to Bella, make sure Bella, that Bella, 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 people Bella, get these ambulances. So that we can move Bella. on to the special prosecutor. We need to talk about him and his inability to function because of you lack see, of funds. I should not allow some of the untruths that my colleagues, uh, my colleague Chen out to stand because viewers are watching. When you say, for instance, that in 2017, some projects were done under the Special Initiatives uh, Ministry through the, whatever, the one million per constituency. That is a palpable falsehood. 
Look, go and check the hands up. There was nothing done in 2017. I got worried. Mm -hmm. And in 2018, I summoned the minister to parliament. And when I asked him about 2017, her answer was that because they were still putting in place the structures, they could not do anything in respect of that. So I sought to find out from her if in 2018 we're going to receive two million US dollars worth of projects for 2017 and 18. Mm -hmm. And what she said was that the money had expired because it was not a statutory fund. And that once the year ends, the money expires. And you sit down here and that's, that's a minister. So you now sit down here and tell our viewers that some projects were done in 2017. Did you ever receive that money? Never. It, where they claim it, it will come in, 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 form, in the form of, 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 of projects. Bella. I haven't seen any project in my constituency. And Bella, I'll even make a revelation on, on this platform. Mm -hmm. Today, they are now attempting to do that project under uh, the, that ministry for 2019 or, tw uh, 2019 or 2020. And it, interestingly, even the procurement processes, and you know mm -hmm. that they are passing it through your MPs and your parliamentary candidates to go and sell. I have had a call directed to my phone. But let's get back to the dead. This, this is oh, a serious allegation. Oh, and I said, hope that you follow it up. Let's go back to the dead. To its logical hey, conclusion. Mother, take it easy. That's my because issue. Otherwise, issue. you can't, I can't oh, allow you to oh, sit here oh, oh. and throw out stuff oh, like that. Oh, oh, well, we hope you follow you up talk, so that you, you talk, I'm please. saying, I'm oh. challenging you that oh. follow it up to its oh. logical oh. conclusion. Oh. Oh. And oh. I will oh. personally oh. hold it to account. All right. Just, just, final just, final just one, one so we can move just on. Just one minute. Okay. You are talking about debt and you are saying that because of the uh, depreciation of the city, the amount would have increased. Was the dollar held constant from 2009 to 2016? Behold on you to defend yourself. Not that me, is not the case. I'm not going to use that one as an excuse. Okay. And now, when you talk about debt to GDP, <laughs> go and check the records. With the rebase GDP, the debt to GDP as at the end of 2016 is 55%. As we speak today, it's about 65%. So All we are right. doing worse even with debt to GDP. On go that and note, check. On that with note. The would Let, a, a let's a go GDP. back to the NPP manifesto so we can introduce the um, issue about the special prosecutor. And so there's one part that says that they intend to eliminate corruption, especially in procurement of goods and services, which is estimated at about 1.5% of GDP annually. Now, yesterday in the news, um, the minority uh, accused the NPP government of deliberately stifling the special prosecutor's ability to fight corruption in the country as they had released just a little amount of money as compared to the 180 million Ghana cities approved budget um, by parliament for him to be able to fight corruption. There is actually a story on this. Can we quickly take a look at that or should we go ahead? Okay, and so minority in parliament is accusing government of deliberately stifling the work of the office of the special prosecutor in tackling corruption. And this is according to member of the Constitutional Legal and Parliamentary Affairs Committee, Roxin Nelson Dafiamepo, who said that out of the 180 million Ghana CDs approved by Parliament last year, as 2019 budget estimates for the office, only 28.8 million Ghana CDs was released by the finance minister. And even with that, he was only able to fight uh, two issues. And so that money was said to have been used for goods and services. So quickly take a look at this so we can speak to our government officials. The special prosecutor, Martin Amido, has on several occasions publicly expressed frustration over how his efforts to fight corruption is being thwarted by some government appointees coupled with inadequate logistics and other resources for his office. The 2019 report presented to the Legal, Constitutional and Parliamentary Affairs Committee of Parliament, Martin Amido indicated that only 28.8 million cities has been disbursed. This 28.87 million Ghana cities that was actually released to the office of the special prosecutor curiously was for goods and services. The releases for compensation, which is salaries for the payment of salaries and, and wages, it was nil. According to his report, I am not fabricating this. Member of Parliament for South Dai, Roxen Dafiamakbo, and member of the Constitutional and Legal Affairs Committee sees this as troubling. If 28.87 million Ghana cities was released for, for purposes of goods and services, what, 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 did the, what are the things that the, the special prosecutor acquired? Computers, machines? And looking into the report further, 
He actually has reported that he's worked on only two cases. Two that he's worked on for the year. So how do we spend in excess of 28 million Ghana cities only for the one to work on only two cases? All right. Okay. So that's the story. And so I'm coming to you first. Why are you stifling the man's fight against corruption? As been said by I mean, the minority. I, when you introduce the <laughs> subject, yeah. before I listen to the tape, I was hoping that I could hear something that really goes to confirm that mm -hmm. government is stifling. Well, stifling. he says... He says, says that that's what the special prosecutor, uh, prosecutor revealed to him. But the same gentleman, who is my very good friend, mm -hmm. Nelson Roxon, is asking how you give a 28 million for to a man for goods and services yeah. to do two cases. Yeah. So one case is how much million? Mm, so half. So really, how do you reconcile that? You see, it's important that we let Ghanaians understand how the budget system works here. Mm -hmm. The fact that some budgetary allocation has been made, and it's not only the special prosecutor's office, oh, across every sector, every ministry, not only under the MPP government, all previous budgets. Okay. Budgetary allocation is not the same as actual amounts released. Because it's a budget. Mm -hmm. Depending on the revenue that comes in to the state coffers, as has been budgeted for, then releases are made based on requests yeah. from the various ministries, departments, and agencies. Okay, so it will be interesting to know whether Mr. Matanamidu requested for 180 million, as has been budgeted for by the uh, uh, 2019 budget, and was given 28 million. Mm -hmm. Then the case can be made that, look, the man requested for all the releases and they didn't come mm -hmm. but if the institutional framework the office accommodation that he needs the regional offices that he was supposed to set up he actually focused to do all those and requested for those funds because i'm not sure that all the 180 million was for goods and services some would have gone for compensation of employees some would have gone for goods and services and others would have gone for capital expenditure well, it hasn't been stated. It only says yes. good sense. So services. he's saying that the 20 million. So it would be interesting to be provided with additional information. The motion has not been tabled. This is the committee because he's a. I used to be a member of the committee until I was reshuffled. Okay. Uh, but I'm a permanent friend of the committee, except that because my own committee is having budget hearings as mm, well, I've not found yeah. time to All right. attend their meetings. And so uh, we'll wait for, for, for the. But he says to be tabled. that there are some government officials that are, you know, sabotaging. His ability to work. You see, when Mr. Matanambidu made that call, I recall quite clearly that I said that it would have been useful, uh, much more uh, 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 purposeful, if he had said that government official A is impeding my work. You'd have preferred if he mentioned Absolutely. Names. Because otherwise, how do we make progress? We can only sit and speculate with the kind of information that he put out. Mm -hmm. But if specific government officials... Because now the impression is that it is government officials, government officials, yeah. as to whether they are public servants, as to whether they are civil servants who are not giving him some documents that he needs. Yeah. Well, he, we don't he did. Know. He did point fingers at certain people. So he had says that he disclosed that the attorney general wanted to pass a legislative instrument that would have made him what he describes as a lame duck. And then later on, he says that um, he accused the, he accused the sp a speaker of parliament, Professor Aaron Michael Quay, of interfering in his work of prosecuting corrupt members of parliament, especially legislators, accused of taking double salaries. And he explained that when he sent an MP to court, the speaker invited him to his office and tried to persuade him. And so these are just a few of things that he has mentioned that's making it difficult. And now he's not even you receiving see, the amount I, of money I, that I guess, he requires. I guess that uh, with respect to the issue of the speaker, uh, it relates to the Honorable Ayaraga uh, mm -hmm. case. Uh, that played out in the public domain. Uh, you recall that uh, Honorable Ayariga had petitioned the Speaker uh, complaining about the manner with which the Special Prosecutor was sought to carry him. out his activities when he was required to attend Parliament. Yeah. And so he invited the Speaker to, as it were, make a determination 
uh, as to whether he was to uh, 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 respond mm -hmm. to the summons that had been initiated by by Mr. Uh, uh, Amidu. Yeah. I guess that in the speaker's own wisdom, he felt that these were matters that could be discussed. And so he And invited, that's why he invited him. Yeah, I'm not sure so that... So wasn't to persuade him against the to issue. persuade him not to prosecute yeah. Mr. Mahama Yaraga. Mm -hmm. Of course, like I said, it played out in the public domain. There were statements that were issued by the parliamentary service which explained the scope of the engagements that the speaker had had with, with, with the special prosecutor. All right. You see... Uh, I, I, I wish and pray and hope that the special prosecutor's office actually works. He doesn't have the tools to work with, he Well, said. I'm not sure that, you see, we, we all, yes, the president said we should be in a hurry. But we ought to, in some instances, hasten slowly. I was part of the committee that worked on this law. Mm -hmm. It's really frightening. The kinds of powers that, and it's futuristic. It's not, uh, our friends uh, felt that that office was being set up, as it were, to witch hunt to gag. Yeah. the, 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 the past administration. So but it, it's really it. futuristic. And so we ought to afford Mr. Amidu space and resources, I agree. And, and, Which you and, haven't done. But if he's been given 28 million, that's not for stifling. goods and services. No, but so let him provide cases. us with the request that he made, and I will come to his defense. Okay. Okay, because I come I'm, to I'm other ministries, you. departments, and agencies <clears throat> under my committee's defense, defense, and request the finance minister to do more. Okay, honourable, speak on this as well, so we can wrap up. Well, the office of the special prosecutor has come under some public scrutiny for some time now. I think the office has been in place for more than a year now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think about two years yeah. now. We don't seem to be seeing much from the office of the special prosecutor. Like we expected. Yes, uh, people have complained and himself have had the cause to complain um, uh, publicly. And look, we have a duty as a country to fight corruption. And Bella, to fight corruption, look, from where I sit, you need three basic things. You need a very resilient legal framework that will fight corruption. Mm. You need to do enough budgetary allocations and releases to state institutions responsible for fighting corruption. Last but not the least is the political will to fight corruption. I believe we have enough laws. I believe we are doing our best to do the budgetary allocations and releases. But what we lack is a political will. And I'll come to that. On whose part? On the part of the political class, especially those in government. Okay. <laughs> Look. Let me give you a very typical example. Despite the fact that our colleagues who are now in government had come after us in opposition, tag President Mahama and the NDC corrupt, and that we're doing nothing to fight, to fight corruption. The composite document in this country that deals with how to fight corruption from all perspectives is the National Anti-Corruption Action Plan, NACAP, that was produced by the government of President Mahama in 2014. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, I will again tell you that in the case of Victoria Hammer, who was a deputy minister for communications under Pres President Mahama, I guess, yes, yeah. only expressed a desire to make a million dollars. She did not tell us where she would make it from, either from a private business or from her office. Well, as she said before she quits politics. Exactly. So clearly from... It could be from business. But this, <laughs> this is a person who had expressed a desire to make a million dollar. I'm sure you'd Before want to... she quits politics. I'm sure you'd want so to make $10 million dollar if the opportunity of this itself. And legitimately do. If I'm in politics and I say before... Legitimately. But how can we verify if but she I'm was saying, going to make that legitimately? But see, based just on because what she of said. that statement, she was fired. Mm -hmm. You are aware that under President Mahama, a senior comrade, a senior member of our party, was put before court and put to jail. I should not mention this thing this morning. Yeah. This is how you fight, you fight, you fight corruption. When you go around, you know, uh, 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 persecuting your opponents, that is not how to fight corruption. You must be able to fight corruption even within your own class. Now, you have a classical example of the boss case. Mm -hmm. How can you imagine that boss would sell about 5 million liters of what they term as off-spec uh, 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 fuel mm. to an analysis company 
a company that was not even registered. And even after the time that the committee had issued its report, not even a city had been paid to bust. But because Alfred Obin is part of the current regime, they have not had the guts to prosecute him. We, I can give you several of them. The president has turned himself into a clearing, a clearing house. This is something you always say. Now, um, now, 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 message. now, um, now, I have just a few now, 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 Take it easy. Take it easy. now, 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 the man should tell us mm -hmm. what he has used the 28.7 million Ghana cities for. And he's only handling two cases. That means that each case is uh, consuming about, uh, if you're going to do some analysis of how much he's been given and what he's, 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 he's doing, that gives about over 14 million Ghana cities per case. Is that what we, we, we bargain for All as right. a country? Okay. I believe no. All right. I believe no. My, my, my time is up. We have to go, unfortunately. I know you were writing a few things that you'd have wanted to respond to. Yes, I wanted to, but to respond to this. Uh, we, we have to run. We have to run, unfortunately. We have to run. Please, please make they sure they that you give him the rest of the money so he can fight. Has a right he can fight corruption to to in the country. It's a state institution. But what are we yes, doing? Yes, what, what are we doing to the people yes, that have been fingered in corrupt cases? Which company, which people have been fingered? PPA is one case that we can be talking is about still over and over and over. And over. No? How long are we going to have to wait? How many uh, stop harassing the, 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 the see, after general? Bella. Sports ministry, someone got reassigned after that issue concerning Bella, the Australian. That's a very important issue. Exactly. So no, these I are agree. Issues. Uh, but unfortunately, we have to go. Maybe no, when we get time, yes. 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 we'll answer yes. those yes. questions. Yes. So anyway, I've been speaking to Honorable Mohamed Abdulaziz, MP for Mion constituency in the Northern Region, and Honorable Andrew Ejapa Mesa is the MP for Second D um, constituency as well. Thank you so much for joining me. Pleasure. And yes, there's more coming up this yeah. morning as well. Aquitia residents are up in arms over Diamond Concession. Uh, Crystal will handle that conversation. And also, so how do you budget for Christmas to ensure that you still have some money saved up and stored up for January? Especially because we know January is a very long month as well. So keep watching. It's TV3 New Day. This has been uh, the newspaper review. And remember